what's good if you've been here before you already know I'm so and sorry. if not welcome and thanks for watching all right so today i'm gonna jump into 10 different ways you can promote your music all right so let's get to it so tip number one is promote your stuff on social media everybody is on social media we all are on here the whole world pretty much is on social media now obviously we don't own platforms like Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, but we need to take advantage of them, and TikTok as well, uh, while we are on them and while everybody else is using them. Side note, you need a website because we don't own none of these platforms. But take advantage of social media because it's still super powerful as far as being able to reach and connect with fans, whether that's on a broad scale to get more exposure or to connect directly with people who may be following you on these platforms already. Make sure you regularly uh, post content as often as you possibly can. I'm not gonna say you need to stick to a certain schedule or whatever. Do what works for you, but make it reasonable so that your fans don't forget about who you are. You kinda gotta be visible to people nowadays to stay relevant pretty much. So make sure you are promoting upcoming music releases, upcoming shows and other news and even some of your personal life a little bit um you ain't got to get you know real in depth with it but the fans want to know who you are as a person even outside of the music so that's tip number one tip number two is music streaming services yeah you would think that's obvious but not everybody you know knows how to take advantage of and promote on the different music or streaming service platforms like Spotify, Apple Music, Tidal. Uh, but the thing that you wanna do with these music streaming platforms is make sure your bios are up to date. Uh, make sure your photos are up to date. Um, I know certain distributors allow you to submit information to them that they can send to platforms like Tidal, Shameless Plug, the music distribution company Illustrate will allow you to do this so that you can make sure your title, bio, and photos are up to date. But if you can, make sure you log into your Apple Music artist profile to update your bio and your photos. And they even have some, some questions that they ask the artists directly on the Apple Music artist platform to give your fans a little more insight on what you're interested in or how different song ideas came about. Just, you know, just it's just an option to give your fans more information about you. And then you wanna do the same thing across these different platforms that allow you to make the connection to your profile feel a little more personal because they're probably following hundreds, if not thousands of artists. So that's how you can take advantage of music streaming services. Um, and you can also grab things like the Spotify canvas, things like that, that these platforms generate to help you promote your uh, releases. Okay, so that's music streaming services. That's tip number two. Okay, so tip number three is music videos. They are a great way to tell the story of your music visually, and they also help with carrying the momentum of a song or a project that you may be releasing or have released. You can come back years later and do music videos to some of your greatest songs that you may not have, have had a, uh, a chance to do it at the time when the song was hot. You may not have had the budget to do a music video, but you can always come back to your songs to create new visuals and release those um, to kind of bring back the momentum or to help carry the momentum for whatever music you've released. Um, even if it's a beat as a music producer, you can create visualizers for whatever beat it may be or for whatever song it may be if you're an artist. Um, and music videos also help with increasing visibility for your music, which equals more exposure, more listeners. So music videos are a great way to build momentum and to carry the momentum of your songs. All right, so that's tip number three. Okay, so tip number four is live performances. A lot of artists love to perform. Some artists uh, reserve the amount of live performances that they do. You can do a tiny desk type of performance if you don't really like to be in front of big crowds. Uh, but live performances are also a great way to increase visibility when it comes to your music. Um, and you can kind of be choosy with this depending on your audience. 
you can perform what may be more comfortable for you or you can do crowd favorites um, or you can mix those together to try to provide the best of both worlds what works for you well and what works for your fans as well that helps with building and carrying momentum not only for the music but for who you are as an artist as well it gives you another way to connect with your fans tip number five is collaborations now i would sort of pivot this a little bit and say collaborations done well can bring great results if you and this other artist have similar styles and maybe some of your fan base might even love what both of you guys are doing already if you are doing great collaborations you and this person has great studio chemistry um and maybe a great relationship even outside of the studio that can help with bringing fans together who would like to hear from both of you all or from whoever is on the song it doesn't necessarily mean it'll just be two people but the more people that you can collaborate with um in your space or within your genre who may have similar sound um not necessarily the exact type of style that you have but something that if you put it together it'll sound good and your fans and that person's fans will want to hear it so collaborations done well can bring you way more exposure tip number six is playlisting now with playlisting um it can get tricky but i will tell you that the best playlists you can be on are playlists that are created by your fans which go back to collaborations when you collab with artists who your fans may be interested in already it gives them the opportunity to now have this group of songs by artists that they love all put into one place or one playlist or several playlists as well you can also obviously take advantage of playlists that are created by platforms like Amazon, Tidal, Apple Music, and Spotify. Now with editorial playlisting, it's a little more challenging because you are dealing with the people who uh, either own or who are responsible for creating the platforms um, or managing the playlists on these platforms and they receive hundreds of thousands of submissions every single day so you got to make sure that you are properly uh, submitting all of the information that really tells the story about your song um, your metadata has to be right that means uh, your song has to be tagged properly with your name as the artist what project it's a part of um, your ISRC codes need to be attached and all of that thing. I won't get really into uh, metadata right now, but editorial playlists are a little more tricky to get on. If you can make some connections with the people who uh, are a part of Amazon, uh, Tidal, Spotify, then it may make it a little more easy for you to get on these type of playlists but encourage your fans to playlist your songs and ultimately make great music so that you'll just end up landing on different types of playlists as well. So try to make sure you are also creating a variety of music by you, but maybe uh, try some different styles here and there so that, you know, maybe you have a song that can land on this person's workout playlist or a chill playlist or something like that where you give people a variety to choose from so that they don't just have to always go move on to the next artist when they want to create a certain type of playlist. All right, so tip number seven is radio. Now radio is more challenging than playlisting because playlisting is digital. You can likely make the connections directly with fans, but radio is a whole different ball game because you do have to go through sometimes DJs and sometimes DJs also have to go through program directors. Uh, if you can make a great connection and relationship with a program director, then you have a higher chance of possibly uh, getting your song on the radio. And sometimes they don't like to admit it, but sometimes you do have to pay to play. And that may be for a certain amount of time. So make sure you ask all of the questions necessary 
Some websites also have the ability for you to submit music directly to the radio station or program director. So just make sure you have everything that you need that they're asking for or requiring. Make sure you have conversations and make sure that you submit everything that they're asking for and just hope for the best or pay for the best. That's the best advice I can give you right now as far as radio goes. Tip number eight is press releases. Now, press releases can give you some great coverage for your music um, by sending press releases out to music publications. Artists can definitely get their music reviewed and you can get more exposure. Um, some people like to read longer articles. Some people like to read shorter articles. And some publications ask for very specific things. So nine times out of 10, um, if you don't have a PR, a lot of times you can do it yourself. You just gotta make sure that you go to their website or you speak to somebody directly who may be affiliated with the publication or the blog or the website or the news outlet to make sure that you are submitting to them exactly what they need. Um, and sometimes if you're not like doing your own graphic design work and stuff like that, you'll have to reach out to uh, your graphic designer or you may have to reach out to your recording engineer if you're not doing these things yourself to make sure that you have the proper uh, file types and um, cover art dimensions and things like that if they weren't already sent to you in the format that the publication is asking for. Also make sure that if you haven't done a press release before, you try to get somebody to proofread it for you uh, some publications also have people on staff who write these press releases for you so that you have a higher chance of getting your music placed on the blog sites or media outlets. It can bring you a lot more traffic and listeners to your music for people who may be looking for or they may just be scrolling on those outlets for more music to listen to. So make sure you try to also submit press releases. All right, so tip number nine, we almost at the tippy top, or I guess the very bottom, however you wanna see it, whatever you wanna call it. But anyway, tip number nine is merchandise, okay? Every artist must have some type of merch. I don't care if you gotta start a whole different brand, a clothing brand or something, uh, create something that either has your artist name on it, um, or start another brand that you can use to sell I don't care if it's a wristband, a planner, CDs, USB sticks, t-shirts, or hoodies, hats, or something with a brand on it that your fans may like, a graphic that they can relate to. Or it can be something with your name on it. It can be simple. It can be a simple slogan or something like that. But have something, um, and it doesn't really take very long to set up a Shopify store or even something maybe more simple like Etsy or Big Cartel, where you can make your merch available, even if you make it locally, grab a heat press and the Cricut machine and start making your own merch, but have some type of merch available at some point, uh, even if it's not right now, have merch available that people can purchase so that you can use some of the money from that brand or from those sales to help fund your music career. Last but not least, email slash text message marketing. I would say both of these are important, but at the very, very least, if you cannot afford to have a text message service in place, at the very least, start collecting emails from your fans. You can use something like MailChimp or Get Response or uh, send in blue even you can use WordPress if you have your own website set up to start collecting emails from your fans so that you can stay in touch with them because what if these platforms go down social media uh, whether it be YouTube Facebook Instagram Twitter TikTok, snapchat whatever it may be if you don't have your own website up or you don't have um, a way to collect emails and or phone numbers from your fans then how will you connect with them so make sure that you start collecting emails and or phone numbers from your fans so that you can let them know even if these platforms go down or if they don't it's another way it's another touch point to connect with them and make the connection feel more personal because once they go on apple music and spotify 
uh, or Amazon Music, whatever they listen to music on, they have the option and the choice, obviously, to go listen to an artist besides you. But if you stay in front of them, if you stay visible, if you stay on their mind, if they feel like you are relevant because you're reminding them that you exist and you have music out, then that way they have a higher chance or it'll probably cross their mind to choose your name when it's time to listen to some more music. Okay, that's it. That's all. Those are the 10 tips that I can give you right now. I hope this can help you. And make sure that if you like this video, you share it, you subscribe to the channel, like it, and stay tuned for more content. If you feel like, hey, I need help implementing some of these things that you mentioned in the video, make sure you go to IndieArtistJourney.com to join my private community where I teach independent artists how to implement these things. Okay? Peace.